Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Mess. So, today I got a fun and interesting video for you guys today because we are doing a 2025 MAME tutorial and MAME setup guide. And I'm putting this on Thanksgiving morning just because it's usually a notoriously slow time. And this one is very specific, but I've been absolutely surprised by the amount of people in the comments saying that they cannot get the Hyper Neo Geo 64 games working in MAME, that they're missing files, that they're having issues, and they're getting error messages all across the board. So, I figured I would do a MAME guide for 2025 so you can play every single Hyper Neo Geo 64 game out there, considering now they all emulate almost perfectly in main with good audio. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we've got a Patreon link down below as well. And like all of my guides I'm going to say right now, please do not skip around. These are made in chronological order and you need to watch them from start to finish to make sure you're going to be successful with them. Because every single time someone comments asking why I didn't talk about something in a guide, I give them a timestamp and tell them that they just basically skipped over it. But the first thing you need to do is obviously have MAME, and while I'm assuming everyone does, I will give this in the beginning of the video just to make sure you have it, otherwise move to about a minute 50 and you'll get to the actual Hyper Neo Geo 64 portion. But if you do need to grab a copy of MAME, I will leave a link in the description below, go ahead and grab it. And something that trips up new viewers to the channel that have never used MAME before, when you actually try to install it, Windows is going to throw up an error message and say that it's basically protecting you from the program. You have to click more info and you have to hit run anyway. MAME is 100% safe, you can virus scan the executable, but you do need to tell Windows that you're actually allowing this to run on your PC. You can put MAME in any folder you want, just make sure you don't move things around because that's where it's going to live from now on. Like I said, I'm pretty sure 99 out of 100 of you that are watching this have MAME installed somewhere. So obviously we have the ROMs folder and the first thing we need to do is put the games in there. And I'm not sure if this is where people are getting tripped up, but if we actually type in Beast Buster Second Nightmare, we'll go ahead and get to navigate to where the game would actually be held. And if you don't have the files, you're going to get a required ROM disk image missing or incorrect. That means the file isn't either there or the file that you have is an old dump. You're going to have to find the files yourself. It's one of those things I can't really help you there, but I'm pretty sure you know how to use Google. But I think what trips most people up right off the top is they put the games actually in the ROMs folder, they go into MAME and try to get them to run, and then they're met with another error message. That is because unlike other arcade games, you actually have to have a Hyper Neo Geo 64 BIOS, which actually has a ton of different files contained within. It's going to have the BIOS for the US, for Japan, for export, as well as Korea, and then at the bottom you're going to see LVS, IOJ, IGX, and JAM. That is for the Korean specific board, that's for the driving motherboard, and that is also for Beast Busters. So there are more than one I.O. board and you have to have the BIOS files for all of them. So we'll go ahead and add them in next. And I think this is again where most people get screwed up. HNG64.zip is going to have every single file you need in there to run every single game so long as it is a relatively modern dump. And at this point in time, pretty much everyone you're going to find out there, if it's not from a really old site, is definitely going to be able to help you with that one. But of course, you should own the original hardware like I do and dump your BIOS from your own hardware, popping that chip off into a chip reader, if you know what I mean. But now you will see I have all seven Hyper Neo Geo 64 games as well as the BIOS Zip, and that is because I own all seven games and original hardware with their associated motherboards and all of the different BIOS files I would need there. So this is the file set you're going to need if you want to play all seven games along with that BIOS file. This is going to be comprehensive, but we're not done yet because when you actually select the system, you're going to see it's going to give you a BIOS option. Export Japan, USA, and Korea. By default, you can go ahead and pick whatever you want minus Korea. That can be a little bit different, but export usually is going to do what you need to do. It's going to have English language support, and you're going to basically have that US version of the game. Let's go ahead and select Japanese for Beast Buster 64, just so we have an idea what's actually going to happen there. If you see Japanese text in a game, that means you have selected the Japanese BIOS. You will see here, you'll even get a warning saying that this game is for use in Japan only. If you see that and you don't care about the language, you're totally fine to start playing. If you do want things in English, you're going to go out back to MAME and then go ahead and select the export or the USA BIOS. Either one will do that job. Because you'll see here as we actually get into Beast Buster Second Nightmare, all of the text is going to be in kanji and that is because we are on the Japanese BIOS. Although like pretty much any Neo Geo hardware out there, you can go into the test menu and have the English language on the Japanese BIOS. This brings it back to the same thing as if you selected export or US. And that's just because SNK seemed to do whatever the hell they felt like when it came to BIOSes and languages. So you have more than one option here. Pick whichever one you want, just be aware that they are in the actual main menu. 
As we actually jump into Beastbusters here, you're going to see that the blood is green and none of the zombies are exploding. That is because by default, every single Hyper Neo Geo 64 game ships with different settings in the test menu for the overall violence levels. Whether it's going to be something like Beastbusters Second Nightmare or the Samurai Showdown games, you need to hit test, which is going to be F2, at least by stock. And in Beastbusters Second Nightmare, you're going to go ahead, you can adjust the difficulty, whatever you want, but you want to go down to violence and you'll see here, it's blood green, meat on. Meat on means they're going to explode, meat off means they're not going to and again you can change the language if you want but for the true beast busters experience you want to go ahead and have blood red and meat on that way you're getting the full beast busters fun now this is something else that trips people up you go to exit and it'll just basically sit here you cannot get out of the test menu in mame by actually hitting exit some games you have to back out to the main menu but in most hyper games if you just go into dip switches here hit enter you will see an option to reset the system that will basically make sure that all the settings are saved so long as you hit exit menu once and then it'll reset you back into the Hyper Neo Geo 64 game you were trying to play. Although on one game it's going to be called a different thing and I will show you that in just a moment. But now that we jump back into Beastbusters Second Nightmare, we have Red Blood, we have the destructible enemies, and because this isn't really a light gun game, it's an analog game, you will basically have perfect aim because it's just going to self-center. Whatever control you have with an analog stick should 100% just calibrate itself when you run the game. And you will see here there is a little trick to Beastbusters Second Nightmare. It's actually a three player game even though the cabinet only had two guns mounted to it. So if you actually want to play Beastbusters Second Nightmare with three players, you'll have to go ahead and bind all of the inputs the way you'd want them to, but you'll see here in MAME we have actual buttons and inputs for a third player. And you'll see here right now they're just bound to keyboard L and J, and when we push those, we are getting data on those analog values, which just means if you want to have a three player game of Beastbusters, technically it is a hidden feature and it does work. Now, if you're wondering why Samurai Shodown 64 right now is in Korean, not Japanese or English, that is because the two Samurai Shodown 64 games actually saw a release in Korea and they have their own Korean variants. And that is a specific I.O. board and ROM set that will allow you to play the games with Korean text. I'm just showing it to you because it is a little bit of curiosity. I've never actually noticed any real differences between the versions of the games. But you will see here, just like Beastbusters, as we strike our opponent with those swords, you are just getting sweat coming off of them. Remember that every single arcade game here is going to have a test menu and some of them are going to have options that you want to turn on because honestly Samurai Shodown 64 without the blood effects when you actually hit your opponent with a sword is 100% boring and doesn't really feel like a Samurai Shodown game should. So again you want to hit F2 whatever button you have test menu bound to and you want to pop into the test menu where we can kind of play around with some of the settings. You'll see here again we have different BIOS options so if you do want to play Korean you do have that option. It is a fun little curiosity but otherwise I've just shown it to you in case you're wondering why the game played in Korean one day. Now in the test menu you're going to see here we have difficulty continues. We also have the language selection how many matches you want per actual match. You can go to one match all the way to five. And you'll see here violence level is one, two, and three. Three is going to be the Samurai Shodan experience you know, love, and remember with all of those fun blood splatter effects and all of the fatalities even though they are quite light in the game. And just like every other game here when you want to exit the test menu you actually can't do it. But this one doesn't have a dip switch setting it does have a bio selection so if you go in there and hit reset it'll relaunch the game and so long as you actually hit exit test menu once that is what MAME is using to save those settings and then it'll always persist so just remember test menu hit exit fail add it reset and then you will have all of the settings persistent so you'll see here again when we play Samurai Shodown 64 we do have the blood coming off of our characters and even though the fatalities are very stylized you will have them in the game because if you don't play around with that you're basically going to be seeing maybe 70% total of what Samurai Shodown 64 has to offer and that definitely is a little bit of a bummer so now you know that's exactly how you make sure you get all of the content in there. Now moving over to the racing games Round Trip RV as well as Offbeat Racer, these things pretty much are going to work and they do not have a calibration menu for the steering the way you would expect. Because these wheels had feedback on them, if you actually go into the menu and try to calibrate them, it's just going to ask you to leave your analog stick in the dead zone right in the middle and hit start. And then it will automatically calibrate for you, but MAME does a great job of this. Not really many options that you need to play around with here except the fact that you can actually switch the traffic lanes from right to left. 
So if you're emulating in anywhere in the world where you drive on the left versus the right, you're going to be able to go ahead and do that. And that's kind of a fun little thing. Just a party trick. But that's basically how you get Hyper Neo Geo 64 emulation working in MAME. And if you're wondering why I didn't take a look at Fatal Fury Wild Ambition, Buriki 1, or the other racing game, that's because I chose one game per genre on the system, and that will get you through everything you need here. And you can see in the input test, you're going to be able to test everything you want, and you can rebind it in the main menu. But trust me, I have not seen this thing get the wrong bindings for a very long time. And if you do want to use a wheel, you'll have to go into the settings and make sure the analog is on a wheel. But that is a different tutorial for a different day. But that's basically the entirety of getting Hyper Neo Geo 64 games running in MAME. And like I said, I was surprised that people were getting tripped up by this, but when I actually went in and reminded myself how to do things and just use muscle memory, I realized there's actually a lot of weird little things going on with the Hyper Neo Geo 64 and a couple of tips and tricks that are going to get you playing games versus just sitting there listening to MAME yell at you because you don't have the right file. Because as much as I love MAME, a lot of times it doesn't tell you what you're missing. It just tells you that you're missing something, and unless somebody explains it to you, you would never know. And just remember, emulation, 99% complete, but it still has a tiny bit of way to go. But we're done. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.